Oggi siamo a Varese. Today we are in Varese on the coast of Liguria and as always we are boarding a boat to have a look and try her out. Oltre 35.000 metri quadrati di stabilimento. Over 35,000 square meters, 15 models currently in production, directed by people that have over 40 years of experience in the construction of yachts. This is the information that makes you want to discover the Absolute Shipyard and its boats. Today, I will pilot one of their largest, the Absolute 64 Fly. This boat is almost 20 meters long and more than 5 meters wide. But this information isn't enough to tell us about its habitability. The designers didn't want to give up on high ceilings and complete furnishings to ensure that the owner and his guests can enjoy all of the comforts of home with the added privilege of sailing. This yacht belongs to the Absolute family Flybridge, which includes seven different models that range from 40 to 72 feet in length. There are enough different models so buyers can choose the boat best tailored to their needs. The exterior is characterized by its elegant line, by its large mirrored glass windows and by the slope of the deck house and the roll bar. Up forward, there is a sunbathing area for three with adjustable backrests. Two compartments contain fenders. There is also a sofa from which you can admire the sea while sailing. With people seated on the bow, the view from the interior helm is slightly reduced, but with a day as beautiful as this, which encourage us to stay at the bow, the captain will most likely control from the flybridge, where there are two armchairs at the helm. The upper deck is all one level and covers a very large area. Here you can lay in the sun, protected by the windshield while laying on a couch which also becomes a solarium. Absolute spares no expense to ensure every comfort. For example, this is not simply a wet bar, as in many flybridges, but an actual cooking unit. Look, there is even a shower. Very rare up here. The aft space can be utilized as you like, and at the center there are convenient storage lockers. At the roll bar position, instead of an awning, you can ask for a hard top with a soft top that can be opened. In the cockpit, there is a large couch and a table making this space more significant, and by lowering the curtain, it can be made a bit more reserved. The interior is decorated with international tastes, interpreted in Italian style. Maybe this is exactly the reason for a success that knows no boundaries. I'll explain. Absolute doesn't have a huge capacity for production, yet its yachts are found all over the world because they are purchased by people of all different nationalities and cultures. An increasingly important element in the owner's appraisal is the large glass windows, which offer a view of nearly 360 degrees. There are no steps between the interior and exterior, and there are no sharp corners, so you can move safely. The salon is simple, and the glass display cases seem to frame the space. The galley is complete with hanging cabinets and a counter to help increase its functionality, and this electric window allows optimal ventilation. The space for the pantry and all the appliances allow you to be self-sufficient for a long period of time. There are many 64-foot yachts of this type, but the Absolute 64 has four cabins and three bathrooms in addition to those for the crew. Let's start at the bow where the VIP cabin is of the highest level, with its volume, its height, its panoramic views and its spectacular vanity. All of the bathrooms have a box shower built into the bulkhead, with a porthole for better ventilation. For the other two pairs of guests, there is a twin cabin, 
and one with bunk beds. Everyone wants an owner's cabin of this size. The king-size bed has a leather headboard. The coach has nearby storage compartments and the vanity comes with a jewellery box. And then there is the corner for the closets. The owner's cabin is very quiet, also thanks to the layout with the aft bathroom. And what a bathroom! What style, what elegance decorated with marble! The crew cabin is equipped with two beds and is accessible from the aft bridge. This outside passage connects the bow and stern, but also leads to the wheelhouse through this sliding door. The Absolute 64 Fly can be equipped with two different propulsion systems. Both are IPS from Volvo Penta. One is the 950 model with a 725 horsepower engine, and the other is the 1200 model with a 900 horsepower engine. On this boat we are testing today, the engine is less powerful, D11 with 725 horsepower. It is a six-cylinder turbocharged 11,000cc diesel engine. Will this size engine be sufficient for a 64-foot boat with a flying bridge this big? This is what we're here to try. Everyone knows the advantages of the IPS propulsion system, and this boat was designed specifically for this installation. There is a joystick for manoeuvring easily, and then there is an immediate response from the steering. In this manner, even an amateur owner can pilot this boat without the need of a skipper or seaman. Another great advantage of this propulsion system is its performance. More speed, less consumption, with less horsepower. Absolute has a close collaboration with Volvo Penta, to the point that it has contributed since the beginning of the development of this propulsion system, and today it is used on practically all of its models. When a shipyard collaborates this closely with an engine manufacturer, they obtain considerable advantages, not only in performance, but also in the trim of the boat. Here, for example, we have the trim assist that automatically regulates the position of the intruder according to the speed, to always have the optimum angle of incidence with the surface of the water. And now I'll show you what this all means. In this phase, during the passage from displacement to planing, the inceptors have been set in the lowest position by the system. We are at 11.5 knots and this is the minimum speed for planing. The motors are running at 1400 rpm, exactly the moment in which they reach their maximum torque. Also, this is an ideal mix. Now we begin to examine the data of the speed up to cruising. We are at 15 knots, 1,750 rpm, and the fuel consumption is 9.8 litres per mile. We give a little more gas and we bring ourselves to a cruising speed that is a little more interesting. Now we are at 20 knots. The trim assist has removed the interceptor so that it does not slow the boat, which balances itself hydrodynamically due to the correct weight distribution and the shape of the hull, of course. I said 20 knots, 2,000 rpm, and the consumption is 9.6 litres per mile. It's incredible. We are going faster, but not increasing consumption. We still have a good amount of power. Let's use it. Twenty-five knots, 2,300 rpm, and the consumption is always under 10 litres per mile. 9.8, 9.7, depending also a little on the waves that are here rather high. In short, I challenge you to find another boat so linear in its performance. 
All'inizio del test mi ero domandato se era sufficiente una potenza di 1450 cavalli per un 64 fly. At the beginning of the trial, I had asked myself if a 1450 horsepower engine was sufficient enough for this 64 foot fly. Now we should find out the answer to that question. Let's push it to the limit. I'll leave the trim assist. The revolutions climb, 2,510. Also, the speed increases, 29.6, 29.7, 30 knots. And fuel consumption is 9.7 liters. Wow! In short, you can go as fast as you like. The fuel consumption remains the same. And you certainly can go fast, because 30 knots at 1,450 horsepower is a great result for this type of boat. Ciò che mi sorprende è scoprire come sia agile un 20 metri. Ed è tutto merito del lavoro che è stato fatto progettando questo scafo e installando questo tipo di propulsione. It surprises me to find out how agile a 20 meter boat can be. It's all because of the work that went into designing the hull and installing this type of propulsion. There are much smaller boats that cannot maneuver so well, also in navigation. And if you cut through the waves or wake of other boats, the boat leans gently, it doesn't jump, it doesn't slam. It is really a pleasure to pilot. There is nothing simpler. There is another quality to discuss before we finish this trial. Observe the profile of the windshield and of the coast. They are roughly parallel. We are navigating in a straight line. Now, however, we veer and watch what happens. The list, the lateral inclination of the hull, is truly minimal. This gives you an idea of how stable the boat is. So, if you like the flybridge, this is a characteristic you should always consider.